This is the ultimate soccer training guide, how to train for soccer by yourself. In this video, I'll show you how to train at home, how to develop all of your technical skills, your physical fitness, and your mental toughness, how to plan your own individual training sessions for the best results, tons of soccer training drills that you can do by yourself to improve your ball control, dribbling, shooting, passing technique, and much more. The first part of your workout should be the warm up. And I want you to start taking your warm up more seriously. Obviously, the warm up is here to prepare yourself for physical activity, it's there to reduce the chance of injury, but this is also an incredible opportunity to improve your athleticism, to improve your mobility, your sharpness, your quickness of feet, to improve your flexibility and your strength. So while other players are taking their warm-up for granted, you are getting the most out of these exercises. This is also a great opportunity for you to mentally prepare. Think about what you want to achieve in this session. A great warm-up will produce a great workout. The next part of your individual practice should be physical training. Personally, I like to get the hard stuff done first so then you can get the ball at your feet. You want to think about constantly improving your fitness, becoming a physically dominant player, a better athlete. If you do that, the game will become easier to you. There are many different disciplines of fitness that you can practice as far as plyometrics, agility, change of direction, stamina, speed. Think about progressing a little bit in these areas every single day. If you need ideas for fitness drills, check out the video I just released called Soccer Conditioning Drills. I'll put a link in the description below. Next, you want to move into technical training. Now, this should be the biggest component of your individual practice. Obviously, you want to improve your fitness, but you want to develop football-specific skills, soccer-specific skills, and for that, you need the ball at your feet. So again, there are many different disciplines you can practice, fast footwork, dribbling, 1v1 skills, changes of direction with the ball, and obviously shooting and finishing. It's difficult to practice passing and first touch by yourself at the field, but I'll make a video in the future to show you how to do that with a wall or even at home. For me, shooting practice is the most important component of technical training. But while I'm shooting, I'm actually incorporating dribbling, ball control into the mix to make it more realistic. When it is finally time to slow down and hit a dead ball, don't just hit balls. Really focus and treat each shot like it's the 90th minute and you only have one opportunity. You want to train consistently, that's how you get results, but you can't do that if you're sore all the time. So put a priority on your cool down. It doesn't have to be long, but take a little bit of time to relieve the tension in your body. You can do some light shaking out, even some light movement like light jogging or walking helps, but some static stretching, trying to focus on your tight areas so you feel better, like you could almost play another game right away. That's the mentality I have, and that's the one I want you to have when you're cooling down. Don't have anyone to practice with? Want to improve your passing, your first touch? No problem. Here's a bunch of soccer training drills that you can do by yourself using a wall to replicate passing, receiving, first touch, and playing with speed.
stuck at home, no problem. Here are some soccer training drills that you can use at home in a very small space to improve your skills, stamina, sharpness, and confidence on the ball. to do is make your training realistic so the way you move with the ball you have to replicate game situations that means your quality your speed your focus and your intensity do the things you do not want to do so what do you find yourself shying away from the things that mentally you don't want to do everyone wants to play with the ball but no one really wants to put in the hard work the things that scare you are the things that you need to do the things that you're not good at are the things that you need to do the things that make you uncomfortable are the things you want to do so usually for people it's fitness run towards those things instead of running away from them it will make you a better player this is just a simple example of someone shooting and how they respond after the shot. All your balls are gone, what do you do? You walk to the ball, you waste your time. Instead, you wanna look for opportunities to gain fitness, to challenge yourself, to push yourself. So instead of walking for the ball, run for the ball. Remember, the game doesn't stop when you get tired. So even if you're tired, you need to learn to keep going. When most players make a mistake in training, let's say for an example, a bad shot with your weaker foot, they'll quickly go back to what they're good at, shooting with their stronger foot. What you wanna do is slow down, analyze what you did wrong, and try to fix it. So that means getting more repetitions, but also think about what you need to change about your technique and practicing it until you get the result that you want. The more you focus, the more you practice, the better it will become. Your warm-up is going to help you have a better session. You prepare yourself physically, you prepare yourself mentally when you go through a proper warm-up. You're also prolonging your career. If you wanna play at the top level or the highest level that you're capable of playing at, for a long period of time, you need to take care of your body and that's the importance of the warm-up. So when I'm doing my warm-up, I'm focusing on actually getting a better, better range of motion, improving my mobility. Speed ladder, the stamina stuff, change your mentality. You want to do those things. Why do you want to do them? Because they make you better. They make you stand out over other players. So when you're training by yourself, motivate yourself, say, hey, there's a reward at the end of this. I like doing this stuff because it makes me different than everyone else. It makes me a better version of myself. After agility, I would go into speed and my speed may just be very basic. It may just be doing six sprints. In between walking back, taking as long as I need, but when it's time to do the exercise, again, I'm focused on having faster acceleration, focusing on the technique of sprinting. How can I get faster every single time? Not just doing it to get tired. I like to incorporate all of the technical skills, dribbling, footwork, uh, ball control, all these things into my shooting drills. Because for me, shooting is the most important. I need to be ball striking, scoring as many goals every time I get on the field and improving my ball striking. When it's time to work, you're working, you're putting in the work, you're gonna get the stamina from all this other stuff. So you don't necessarily have to focus on a few full fields there and back getting yourself to a point where you feel uncomfortable and pushing a little bit past it. If every day I'm a little more sore, I'm a little more tired, I'm a little more fatigued, I'm a little more mentally drained, I'm not gonna be able to continue at this rate. I have to train in a way that's very smart. So I wanna do stamina, but I need to listen to my body and I need to say, is that enough? Can I come back tomorrow? And the way that you're really gonna come back tomorrow is these two right here, the warm up and the cool down. If you do those things and you do them properly, as well as proper nutrition, hydration, getting good sleep, then you can actually come back. You can have a hard training session. You can come back the next day and feel better, not worse.